Hello guys and welcome to another David Zavaleta. My name is Serge and in today's video I'm basically doing um, some diagnostics on my Range Rover into trying to figure out is it possibly going to go into like um, overheating type of mode or not. Um, so let me show you kind of like what's going on and talk about some of the things uh, that it needs done. But first, let me show you this. So currently I'm on the highway and the temperature is 208 degrees, which is actually pretty lovely. And then you look at my center temperature gauge, slightly below center. But right now it's uh, 210. And now it's climbing higher. But anyways, it, this is not that concerning. Uh, this is just goes up and down depending on these uh, little hills and, and whatnot. What is concerning, however, is that I've seen it go as much as 237 degrees today while parked. So with that being said, guys, I am driving home so that I can actually have it idle. And then I want to see if the Range Rover is going to go into overheat which means I could just simply shut it off and I will be good, right? So at this point, I did pull over. I did look, I have perfect amount of fluid, which is distilled water. So it's not radiator fluid. Um, there's no leaks of any kind. Everything looks completely normal, uh, but the, the outside temperature is 80 degrees and because it's 80 degrees obviously it's a little bit warm outside um, for September so the vehicle does not like the fact that it's in traffic or it's parked because there's not that much airflow going through the radiator and fans cannot keep up with the engine's temperature. Now, I am not sure if my fan needs replacing. I'm not sure if it's ever been replaced. It can result in a problem if the fan, of course, you know, it's like, a, let's say like a mechanical fan and it has failed and it's not spinning good enough, you know, but um, I don't know. I do not know that because once I'm driving everything's fine but when I'm parked temperature rises yes it can't be due to the fact that there's no radiator fluid it's just distilled water but it can also mean that there's some kind of air pocket that's still in the system now recently um, I did replace the overflow tank and when I replaced it, I tried to pressurize the system to see if it would hold at least 15 PSI. And somewhat, it was holding it. Okay, it wasn't like holding it amazing, but like it was, it was there. And it would drop like maybe like in eight minutes, it would drop like a couple PSI. So not a huge concern because the pressure should be between 13 and 15 PSI. But there wasn't any leaks whatsoever so what do I want to do today the very first thing first I want to see if I could actually get rid of this problem by removing the air pocket um, by putting the system under vacuum and it will get rid of any potential vacuum uh, well it will get rid of any air pocket due to the fact that it's under vacuum so that it's its job and then i will add more distilled water to it which means then i would start up the vehicle and i would let it sit there and idle at these current temperatures to see if that will resolve the issue now the reason i'm doing that and not putting radiator fluid i first want to work out the actual temperature uh, temperature differences uh, with distilled and radiator fluid 
But to answer my own question, I want to know, is the current temperature that it gets up to 137 because it's distilled water or is there really an air pocket? Well, if there is an air pocket and I could get rid of it by putting the system on the vacuum and just adding more water to it, then technically the system is going to get properly cooled and it's going to be cooling down the vehicle, which means, yes, you could continue driving like that in the summertime, but it's it's end of September. I need to think about, uh, not only think about, but replace the distilled water with radiant fluid, install a thermostat, like it's supposed to have one. Right now, it does not have one. Um, it's a free-flowing system right now because of distilled. And before you think that's bad, the normal operating temperature of this Range Rover is between 195 degrees and 220 degrees. So normally when I'm driving it, it's above 190, it's at 204 or 208, sometimes like 199, you know. It's only when I'm parked, the temperature can, get, can go past 130 up to 137. Now, I did see it before where it was just radiator fluid and it would not go above 217, which is why I think it's a possibility that there is an air pocket somewhere in the system. Could be in a heater core. Also, it can slowly develop as for a reason that I'm only using water, so water heats up faster than radiator fluid i'm assuming vapors would be created and trapped in the system building sort of like an air pocket over time and correct me if i'm wrong this is just something that, that i that i'm thinking always in theory you know so i like to do these experiments that way i could actually know in the future um what's actually happening if somebody comes to me and they'll ask me, hey, this is what's going on, I could ask them some simple questions and I could figure out very quickly whether or not their vehicle is operating correctly. Now, with all that being said, I did not, I did not see my, um, my normal temperature gauge move even slightly. It is a good working gauge. So anybody with an untrained eye, without the external gauge, would have had no idea that there's these temperature differences because probably somewhat of a difference is normal in all these different driving conditions, like going up hills or maybe just parked on a really, really hot day. Obviously, the temperature differences are going to be varying slightly. Um, now, I live in South Carolina climate and North Carolina, like Charlotte area. This is where I drive. We don't have really cold winters here, but we do occasionally have freezing temperatures. So definitely you can't be driving with simply distilled water. The only reason I've been keeping distilled water for so long is because I have <clears throat> did like this test to see if I add radiator stop leak, will it actually seal the radiator as much as that was leaking when I first got it? It seemed very bad. Yes, it sealed it. So how long will it last? I was told a couple hundred miles, tops 500 miles. It lasted 22,000 miles. Sure, throughout the process, I had to monitor things and I also tinkered with it a little bit and I also made it start overheating in one of the videos because I wanted to see how long it takes for it to overheat and how long does it take uh, for it to cool so that I can sort of like come up with my own solutions for somebody that's stuck on the road somewhere because this is how I think I've been driving Mercedes Sprinter vans for so long that I'm always thinking about other people in coming up with other solutions when you're on the road somewhere. 
There might not be any towing services. There might not be anything, but you might have water with you, you know. Can you just simply fill it up with water and get home? And that is always the question that I'm asking. Can I help somebody out with this video that's somewhere stuck on the road, their Range Rover overheating? And as you will know, it's very common that Range Rovers overheat. And why is that? Is it because they just run a little bit hotter than normal? Is it because maybe somebody messes with the radar system and they replace something, including maybe like a thermostat or maybe they just replaced the radiator, overflow tank? Maybe they just drained the system and now they put like new radiator fluid, but then they, tr you know, like maybe they get it done professionally or maybe they do it themselves. And whether or not it's been done professionally, it may or may not overheat. Could be because of the air pocket being trapped. Could be because um, maybe that's normal, you know. To know that if it's normal or not, obviously I need to test these uh, features. And I'm not about to watch um, all of the videos on YouTube, uh, you know, to learn from it. I'd much rather learn from my own stuff because I will not allow it to overheat according to the temperature gauge. I do believe, however, if it goes to uh, 245 degrees, I do believe at that point, um, the temperature gauge is gonna start going up. I do think that that is what's gonna happen. I'm not sure, but I do think that's what's gonna happen. If you guys know that actual answer, let me know. But I think I will know this in today's video later video not this video what's going to be the case because i'm going to end up doing a little test and let it idle and let it so like my very first uh, thing what i want to do is like come home just let it idle i'm going to be looking at the, my temperature external gauge temperature i will put my camera on it so the camera will essentially act as a timer I will be able to see the minutes countdown and see how long does it take for the temperature to rise. I will take note of the fact that outside temperature could be 80 or maybe 77 degrees at what temperature. And note the fact in the video that we are using distilled. Um, there's no leaks, but distilled and no thermostat. That way for the future video, I may already have everything in place like, like it's supposed to be. Because I do have a thermostat, I do have a water pump, I do have a brand new radiator. <clears throat> I did replace a lid in the beginning, but now I've replaced the whole overflow tank. So I will be doing things correctly. It's just for the test purposes, I hope you guys understand that I, I'm doing things the way I'm doing. This is the only way to learn about stuff very quickly. Like with sprinters, I have lots of experience because I've seen a lot of different things happening. But normally, they don't have no issues with overheating. Unless you're in the mountains somewhere and you're going up and down and you got a you got a load, even if you don't have a load, especially like California mountains, um, you will see uh, sprinter heat up a little bit, you know, uh, on your temperature gauge. So that's always concerning, you know, you never want to see that. But for the most part, sprinters, they, they do just fine. Um, like in normal driving conditions. Of course, with radiator fluid and everything being done the, the proper way. So, anyways, guys, if you have any opinions or whatever you want to say, you know, please tell me in the description below. Um, I mean, uh, in the comment section below. But um, I do appreciate you guys watching. Um, thank you so much. Take care of yourself and see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.